Good morning to all the members of Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church. I'm so delighted to be able to greet you in this fashion once again. I miss so greatly the fellowship of the saints, our being able to come together. One thing I know for sure is that we are, when we are able to get back together into the sanctuary to worship, this one scripture ought to ring true in our hearts and in our minds. I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. When we come back, we ought to have a brand new mindset and appreciation for what that verse truly means. So I hope to send that message out when the time shall come and we'll be able to gather together again here in the Lord's house at Morning Star, right here in Durham, North Carolina. So y'all continue to pray for me. I'll continue to pray for you. Continue to call one another. And let's continue to pray for not only ourselves, our church family, but others here on this earth. Everyone that has suffered through this coronavirus, that has lost, lost loved ones to this coronavirus, we need to pray for them all. I also want to let you know we need to rejoice and praise God. We thank him because the sister of our own, Naomi Pratt, is out of the hospital and at home. She had coronavirus and God has blessed and beat coronavirus in her body. Amen. So we want to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for that victory. And I'm so delighted today to be able to stand and say he heard our prayers, he answered our prayers. Amen. God is still on the throne despite whatever may be going on down here. Always remember that God is still on the throne. Amen, church. Amen. Let us bow our heads for opening word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord for blessing us today as we come together in this way through the use of technology. I don't know who will be hearing the sound of my voice, but God, whoever may tune in and hear this, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, you would bless them, that through the Holy Spirit, you would touch their spirit, you would touch their heart. If they don't know you in the pardon of their sin, then God, may they come to know you and to believe in you. We were all once lost in sin, but God, we thank you so much. We did not choose you. As the Bible says, you chose us, and we thank you, Lord God, for choosing us and saving us from the life that we thought we were living when in reality we were only dying. Father, we pray also for this pandemic, that you would put an end to this. You would stop this plague upon the nation, upon this entire earth. We pray also, Lord God, that you would turn people's hearts back to you, that you, the church, instead of emptying out, would begin to fill up all over again, that people would come with an understanding. I'm not here to tell you how to run it. I'm here for you to tell me what thus saith the Lord. Amen. So, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, just continue to bless us all in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to direct your attention this morning to the book of Joshua, the first chapter. I'm going to read for your hearing, uh, Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, from the King James Version of the Bible. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. You can turn there if you would like to read along with me. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through through nine will comprise our scripture text for today. And the Bible reads this way, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coasts. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. I want to continue preaching on our theme for this year, which is finding God. And for a topic today, I want to lift this thought, finding God in the midst of your struggles. Finding God in the midst of your struggles. As a child, my brothers and sisters, there were times when I was able to realize, just watching my parents, that they were struggling, struggling to make ends meet. My mother one day was in the kitchen, and she was preparing dinner. I was over in the living room, and I was watching the news on TV. The news reporter that was on at the time, I remember him commenting about how tough times had become and how that people were struggling to make it through those tough times. But he made a comment that really grabbed my attention because he said that there were some people who were resorting to eating canned dog food. Well, being the little child that I was, I turned to my mother who was in the kitchen cooking, and I said, Mama, have you ever fed us canned dog food? Well, I was shocked at her answer, and she left me seriously perplexed because my mother looked at me and said these words. She said, you will never know. The only thing I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, is that day when I sat down for dinner, I ate my dinner very cautiously, very cautiously, because I, all I could hear going through my head over and over again was those words, you will never know. I believe, my brothers and sisters, that Everyone has had to struggle at some time or another. And I also believe that when we are struggling, it can change us, sometimes for the better and sometimes for worse. <clears throat> God has provided an opportunity for us here in the book of Joshua to better understand why we must struggle sometimes. As we struggle during this difficult time, this time of this pandemic, we cannot lose our focus on him who died for us. We cannot become discouraged and lose our trust in his word. We cannot become weak and give up on helping others and start to think only of ourselves. God's servant, Moses, is dead. And it would appear that Israel is leaderless. But Joshua is chosen by God to become the new leader of his people, Israel. Three times in chapter 1, God tells Joshua these words. He tells him to be strong and very courageous. That is a clue, my brothers and sisters, about how we ought to understand the struggle that is about to come for Israel. 
I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, first of all, they must take possession of the land. God has brought his people to the edge of the promised land. But Moses was not to lead them into the promised land. Instead, it would be Joshua. He is to lead God's people in taking possession of the land beyond Jordan. And now as their leader, God encourages Joshua by his word. Now Joshua has this great responsibility thrust upon him. But look at the three assurances God gives to Joshua. First he says, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. That does not mean, my brothers and sisters, that he cannot approach anyone because physically no man can stand, but he's talking in reference to an enemy who would stand or one who would stand to oppose him. Then he says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Joshua, being Moses' minister, could see how God walked with Moses. And then thirdly, he says, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Then he lays out the boundaries of the land for Joshua that Israel is to occupy. There in Joshua chapter 1, verse number 4, the Bible says, From the wilderness, the place from which they have come, and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Surely this would inspire confidence in Joshua. But God kept reminding him, only be thou strong and very courageous. Well, my brothers and sisters, I must ask the question, what are the promises God has made to us? There are many in the Bible, far too many for us to list, but allow me to share just a few with you. First of all, remember 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Another favorite of a lot of people is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Another, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And then one of my favorites, Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, which says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. This is important to us because just like Israel, there is a land we are meant to take possession of. But my brothers and sisters, we are not without our own struggles to get there. Just as Israel must have some struggles in taking possession of the promised land, so too we will have some struggles in taking possession of the land we are meant to take possession of. That brings me, my brothers and sisters, to my next point. Possession would not come without struggle. The land God was giving them was already inhabited. They would have to go in armed to fight to drive the inhabitants of the land out. This is one reason God kept telling Joshua to be strong and very 
courageous. Joshua would take all the men of fighting age to be his soldiers. And he would have to take them across Jordan and into this land God was going to give them. And they would have to drive them out. But God had already assured Joshua of victory. For God had said to Joshua, I will give you every place where you set your foot. And he said, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. You know, my brothers and sisters, for us to occupy the place where Jesus has gone to prepare for us, we are going to have to face our own struggles. The land there where Jesus is is not occupied. Therefore, we have no need to drive somebody out of the kingdom of heaven. No, our adversaries are here with us right now on this earth fighting against us to keep us from ever entering in. Satan and his demons wage war against those who have put their trust in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Sunday after Sunday, the preacher says for us to be ready, to be strong and very courageous. But in our readiness, we seem to forget his promises concerning us. Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6, reading from the New International Version, says this, Be strong and courageous. There that is again. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And then Exodus 14, verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. In other words, you don't have to say nothing. Let God do the fighting. My brothers and sisters, oh, if we could just learn sometimes to keep our mouths shut. Yet so often, when we are faced with struggles, we give in and behave no better than the enemy that is fighting against us. It's like we forget all that Jesus said and all we can remember is that I've heard it somewhere in the Bible, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Just like Joshua had to encourage the people, we need to be encouraged. We'll take it out of context so long as we feel it justifies the action that we want to do. But we cannot take the word out of context. Now our encouragement, my brothers and sisters, is the same as Israel's encouragement. Our encouragement is the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 30 tells us, The Lord your God which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Now that verse of scripture ought to be a tremendous encouragement for Israel because of what God did for them in the land of Egypt and how they saw God fight Pharaoh and his army and the Egyptians and how they saw God through miracles defeat them. But oh, my brothers and sisters, there's just one problem with that. Out of all the people that came out of Egypt and left for the promised land, only two made it to the promised land. In other words, out of all the hundreds of thousands of people that are gathered there ready to go in to the promised land, only two were left that came out of Egypt. For you see, remember how they murmured against God in the wilderness? Well, remember how God said they are a stiff-necked people. And how God said, I will raise up a new generation 
and bring them into my promised land. And this is that new generation save two people from the old, Joshua and Caleb. Well, my brothers and sisters, just as he gave Joshua a plan to take possession of the promised land, he has laid out a plan for you and me. But our problem today is that we are caught up fighting the wrong battle. We have chosen to try to engage the enemy physically. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, if you want to get into a physical altercation with the devil, you will lose every single time. You are not strong enough to fight against the devil by yourself using only your physical strength. We must learn to fight the right battle, the same battle that God told Joshua to fight. That brings me, my brothers and sisters, to my final point, for we must struggle to win the right battle. Struggle to win the right battle. All that God promised Joshua was contingent upon one premise. Out of everything that God promised him, there was one contingency. There was one premise for all of that to come true. So it is with us, too, that his promise to us is contingent, oddly enough, on the very same premise that he gave to Joshua. Look with me at what God said to Joshua there in chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. I'm going to read it to you from the New International Version so you get a clearer understanding. Be strong and very courageous. That's how it starts out. But watch this. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right nor to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Joshua took an army across Jordan but they were only a semblance of a greater army. Their enemies fell before them because every place Joshua's foot tread upon, God was giving them that land. The outward physical battle that Joshua and the army were fighting was a semblance of a greater spiritual battle that was being fought. The armies of the Lord were advancing and destroying Israel's armies. How do I know? Because the Bible says that the Lord fights the battle. Our fight, even to this very day, is not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle. Not with an external enemy, but with an internal foe. Romans chapter 7 verse 19 gives us a strong clue. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. That is a description by Paul of the fight that is going on on the inside of us. Where our spirit and our flesh wage war one against another. We must fight to gain the wisdom of the Bible and the understanding of his holy word. We must fight to get God's word in our heart because there is where he lives in us, in our lives. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, having a Bible if you never read what's inside? Jesus in his struggle with the devil in the wilderness won by quoting 
the word of God. And just like Joshua, we are not to turn to the right of it or to the left of it. Instead of trying to change his word to align with us, we must allow his word to change us so that we are conformed to his image. The devils will then begin to tremble before us. The devils will then flee from before us, not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. They will know like the demons who troubled the seven sons of Sceva when they testified of Jesus and Paul there in Acts chapter 19 and verse 15 saying, Jesus, we know, and Paul, we know, but who are you? Well, Acts, my brothers and sisters, gives us that powerful description, but if you get the word in your heart. They will know you because his word lives in you. The same word which became flesh and dwelt among us. Therefore, fight the right battle. I know, I know you work hard and you get tired. But the devil loves a tired sinner. I know you got things to do after work. But the devil loves a busy sinner. I know studying, going to school, and doing schoolwork wears you down. But the devil loves a weary sinner. I know you've got to make money and pay bills. But the devil loves a rich sinner. Don't get mad at me. You're fighting the wrong battle if you get mad at me. Fight the right battle. Get into the word and let the word get into you. Because when you do, you'll find God will make your way prosperous. And you too will have good success. Just like the Bible says. The real battle is not physical. It's spiritual. The only battle we're left to fight now is the battle against ourselves. And if we win that battle, then he will live within us. Because we've got to get his word in us. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what the Bible tells us. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, there may be someone here under the sound of my voice. Hearing this sermon, I ask in Jesus' name that you would bless them, Lord. They've come to a realization. They've been fighting the wrong battle. And they want to start fighting the right battle. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would come into their life. That they would confess you as Lord and Savior. And they would receive Jesus Christ into their heart. And they would become a born-again Christian. Father, we thank you because of your promise to us. Your word will not return to you void. It will accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're listening to this and you've never received Christ, but you want to be saved, bow your head and pray this prayer with me. Father in heaven, I give you my life. I confess with my mouth that I am a sinner in need of salvation. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your gift, your son, who came and died at Calvary, shedding his own blood 
to wash away my sin. Let me be reborn in him, a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Thank you, God, for saving my soul by your son and his sacrifice. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My brothers and sisters and those who may be hearing, we hope that today the sermon has blessed you. If you would like to give a donation to this church, please go visit our website, www.msmbcd, Morningstar Missionary Baptist Church, Durham, just the acronym, msmbcd.com. There you can go to our giving page and make a donation to this church. We thank you, and we hope and pray that God will continue to bless you. See you next week. Morningstar family, keep praying. We're going to be together again one day. Amen.